He's Josh Charles, uh, Baltimore Orioles and uh, Baltimore Ravens apologist. Great actor. Got killed in a good wife. Uh, doing something now called uh, Free Held. Is that right? Yeah. Indie film? Yeah, just started it yesterday. Okay, say Julianne Moore, uh, Ellen Page, Steve Carell. Mm-hmm. Nice. All right, big star power there. How about that? How many, uh, so The Good Wife, You Die. Did you get to choose how you died in The Good Wife? Did I get to choose how? No, I, um, no. I mean, they told, I mean, I, I think when, when I decided I was going to move on from the show, um, I think they had a couple options. And, you know, one of them was move him somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Or the other was to the more dramatic option. So um, Robert and Michelle King chose the more dramatic, and I supported it. I thought it was good for where it could lead the show and, and send it in a different direction. Net Network TV is pretty hardcore, though. I don't know what that means. Uh, intense. Yeah. What yeah. about it is intense? Um, well, I don't know. If maybe network TV has changed. You know, main characters don't die normally on TV. Right. No, I think that's... That was I, what was... I, know, I think, I think it happens, right? I think, I think our show, it, it definitely, we don't do that on our show. So I think that it doesn't happen often, uh, and, and we were able to really keep it a surprise for an entire year was... In this day and age, with all the wait, you so shot that. How how far in advance did you shoot it before it actually aired? Um, I think we shot it January and it aired March. And to keep that under wraps is almost impossible. Yeah, but, but also considering that you know we knew we knew the storyline even before the season started. Last, you know, even before the fifth season started, we knew, and we were able to. You know, that means people on the set knew little by little and. Still, somehow, we kept it a surprise. How many um, movies or shows have you been killed in? You know, I, uh, Paul was just saying, he, he said he had three, and I just rattled off two more. Uh, I, I'm going to say five, probably. Are you good at dying? Um, how's it working out right now? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're killing me, that's for sure. <laughs> And I don't know. I don't really appreciate that Ravens apologist either. I, I'm not a Ravens apologist. What, is that? what kind of cheap apologist? shot is that? No. You're, uh, so are you an Orioles apologist? What, what does apologist mean? I'm a fan of both well, exactly. teams. Exactly. Yeah. It's is just. A, it's just. Oh, a, okay. It's a, All right. I thought you were making a cheap shot at no. me. I wasn't sure. Oh, is that why you gave me kind of the cold shoulder to start the interview? No, I never a cold shoulder. Wow. I love you, Dan. Will you stop? Just relax. Huge fan of yours. Free your mind. The rest will follow. <laughs> Relax. I come in peace. The mic is hot. I come. The, the mic, mic is hot. I come in peace. I could say that about you know Seton's a Yankee apologist. Paulie's a Bears apologist. What's I'm, your What's your baseball I'm, team? I don't have one anymore. You don't? No. Nope. Did I, you? Uh, Reds. You were growing up in Cincinnati. Yeah. But when I started, I knew that I couldn't have a real allegiance because then if I criticize your team, somebody's going to say, "Well, he's, yeah. he's a Reds fan," or. If I'm a Bengal fan yeah. uh, and I'm criticizing the Ravens, you'd say, well, he's a Bengal fan. Would you wear a Yankee hat if you had to in a movie or a, a TV role? Absolutely not. I, That'd be a deal breaker? Oh, yeah. So Scorsese says, uh, Josh, you got to wear a Yankee hat. Can't do it. I, it would be really hard. Who hates the Yankees more? No, I mean, I look. I would I would encourage them to to have the character wear a Mets hat like Ben Affleck <laughs> did in his movie. I read an article about that, and I look I understood. I also think for him he's such a you know he's such a known Sox fan that to take that into a film, I think he's right. It could potentially take people out of a moment, and uh, I like the fact that he that he battled uh, Fincher on that. Does does he hate the Yankees more than you ha hate the Yankees? Yeah, I, I don't. You know, it's weird. I don't hate the Yankees. It's um, I mean, that's not true. I do, but. <laughs> But it's different. It's you know what it is. I, I I have a lot of respect for the Yankees, um, particularly you know when I felt when they started the last sort of string of championships in the beginning that they were were bringing a lot of guys up from the farm and they were peppering it with the right free agents. And then I think it just got gross, and 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 it just was who could they buy every year? And that's when they lost me a little bit. I mean I have respect for the organization. Um, I love Derek Derek Jeter. Um, have one you of my met favorite. him? I never met him. Um, I wish I, 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 I wish I could meet him, but I, I've never met him. He's been one of my favorite players ever. And it's hard not to have a lot of respect for the Yankees. I, I, I just, you know, look, they're divisional rivals. So I hate them in that respect. I hate the Red Sox in that respect and how, you know, powerful they've both become these two behemoths fighting each other. And the Orioles have somehow become the bastard stepchild. And now we're having our, our moment to, uh, to shine right now. And I'm excited, but it's hard. You can't hate Kansas city. 
I don't. Like, isn't it tough to – like, you want to dislike the team you're going against no, in exactly. the playoffs, right? So right. I, I, I'm trying to think of things to hate about Kansas I, I've been to Kansas City, you know, um, and it's a, it's, it's a great town. Uh, the, the, the team, you know, they have such great fans. The people there were really nice to me. Uh, and I like that team. I, I think they're aggressive. They're young. They're hustling. Um, the only thing that I can sort of build up hatred about is that they're standing in the way of what – my team wants and what I want as a fan of my team. And so the hatred will build over the course of these next two weeks. But to be perfectly frank, if, 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 uh, you know, it, I, I it, it's, it's a different feeling than if it was the Yankees or the Red Sox that we're facing. Cause I, you know, I, I like both these teams. Obviously I like the Orioles more and I, and I think the Orioles can do it. I think, I think, um, I think the power the pitching the defense, I think can make a difference. Last time the Orioles made you cry. Oh God. Last time they made me cry. Um, honestly, I would say when we had our first, when we when we went to the playoffs two years ago. I mean, that was the last time because that it had been so long and the team had been so bad for so, so long. So it was a good cry. It was a good cry. A good cry. I cry. I have good cries. Don't, do Can you ever you? have a good cry? Oh, God, I'm Irish. Are you kidding me? Do you really? Oh, okay. oh, I if love you that. start crying, I'll cry. <laughs> At some point in the end of these twenty minutes, we're gonna cry together. I, we're gonna figure out a reason. Can to cry. you cry? It on, might. It might be. Can um, you cry on cue right now? No, I'm not. No, I'm terrible at that. No. I could cry on cue. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> See? Yeah. No, I, 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 there's there's no joke here. That's called acting right there. You're good. You're good. No, I, I I'm not good at crying on yeah. cue. No. Yeah. But um, could you teach us how to die during the break? <laughs> Could you do that? I, I, Could you reenact the death in The Good Wife? No, I can't do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Come on. It's all that was so. Someone that's doing some of that quite often is so boring because it's so technical, and you know you got to shoot it all different ways, and it, you know. Yeah. All right. So huh. you're not going to teach us how to die. I'm not going to teach you. How to yes, Paul. What's the problem? There's a movie called Things to Do in Denver When You're Dead, and yeah. Josh gets killed very rough. It's like a, a knife into the neck. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's the scene we want reenacted. Not you want you want that? To, to, okay, all right. But can we stab you, or are you stabbing? I don't think anyone's stabbing anyone here. Well, we're no, doing no, a radio we're, program. No, no, it, it's on TV too. I know it's on TV. Yeah, so it's called a simulcast. Oh wow! Yeah. Wow, the, I just got called out. Yes, but dead. you know what it is. <laughs> I I listen to your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't say podcast. I download your podcast. <laughs> Where's Ethan Hawk? How's he doing? You should have brought Ethan today. I, I like should've. Ethan. He's a good guy. He is a very he's good, a good guy. guy. He's doing great. Uh, how many kids he got? God, I don't know. He's, yeah. he's got a, he's got a, some kids. And you got one on the way. I got one on the way. That's December. Awesome. That's yeah, awesome. my first. Would you, if boy? Yeah. Buck Showalter Charles. Charles. Yes. yes. Yeah. What about Cal? Would you go? I, you know Cal? what? I have a Rip friend. Him. I have a no. I have a friend who has a, a son named Cal. So that that's off the table. Would your wife be okay if you named your son after an Oriole? If she liked the name, but I, I don't, I don't think that's gonna happen. But if she it's liked the name, Brooks, oh Brooks, Brooksy. Brooks Robinson, Brooks Robinson, oh, Charles, ball game. Well, that's that's wait, but that's saying. I mean, we don't know. You know, we don't know if it's boy or girl. So who but knows? you could go Brooks, and it could be, it could be Brooke, it could be boy or girl. Look at me. Wow, I gotta tell you, there, you have a gift. Look you have a gift at for this. Me. You have a gift. You have a gift for picking names. Well, I got four kids. You do? Yeah. What are your kids' names? Uh, Jack, Grace, Georgia, Molly. I mean, not named after anybody. Mark Grace, you know, the state of Georgia, Jack Buck, and uh, Molly Patrick. I have no idea. Well, yeah. Yes, and Molly Hatchet. Molly Hatchet, my favorite right. band. Yeah, that's right. Molly Hatchet. <laughs> uh, all right. So, is, what, Flirting with Disaster? Was that Molly Hatchet, Seaton? Uh, is that the name be. of the album? Yeah. By the way, we got into an intense argument last night at dinner over the greatness of the Beatles and the yeah. Who and yeah. Nirvana. Oh, what was the argument? Like what? it 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 all it didn't come to blows, but mm -hmm. I'm sitting next to Seaton and all of a sudden he says the Who is overrated. Never been a big Who fan. I go, "Are you kidding me?" And he goes, "Well, Kurt Cobain said I'd rather die young than to I hope I die before I become Pete Townsend and I was of an age where that made a big impression on me and I think that that really skewed what I thought of the Who mm -hmm. from that point on. Yeah. So I I feel that way about the Doors. Not a big Doors yeah, fan. Yeah, they're overrated. Never, never been a big Doors fan. I, I'm fascinated with Jim Morrison. 
Yeah. But I'm not a big Doors fan. I agree. Right. Fascinated with Hendrix, but I'm not a, a Hendrix fan. Disagree with you there. Okay. Hendrix, I, I think, is a is Well, a, I know he's great. God. I just don't like the music. Oh, I love the music. All right. Josh Charles. What, Fritzy? A couple of quick thoughts for uh, Josh Charles. If, in fact, he has a son, would be Bumry or Tippy. Tippy uh, Martinez. What about what about if we have a girl? So potential girl names that could work. Well, Tippy. Like Tippy, Tippy yeah, Hedren. Tippy Hedren. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Okay, that could go both All ways. Right, fair enough. All right, we'll come back. Josh Charles will teach us how to die during the break. If you're watching on, uh, <laughs> it's a simulcast on Audience Channel 239 Direct TV and the NBC Sports Network. This is the Dan Patrick Show. He's Josh Charles. He knows how to get killed. The good wife. He's done. Uh, now doing something called uh, Free Held, an indie film in New York. Uh, you, are you shooting today? No, I shot yesterday. Oh. Huh. Ba- I'm heading to Baltimore as soon as I finish this. We're go- I'm going. Uh, but it's going to rain. As soon as I finish the simulcast. <laughs> yes. I am heading I am heading right to the. Ch- is it going to rain? I heard you say yeah, that. Yes, 100%. Does that 100% mean chance they're going to play the game, though, right? I, 100%. I don't know how long it's going to be 100%. Who says 100%? Because I, I just looked at my phone Pauline. and it said 50%, not uh, 100%. Okay. Well, Paulie, is it 100%? Jim Cantore says looks like rain. Okay. Right. Who, who's Jim Cantore? Weather Channel. Oh, the Weather the Channel. Big oh, guy. okay. Yeah. Come on. Sorry. Um, you did. You have been in uh, a lot of our uh, great movies here that we love, including Dead Poets Society. Mm-hmm. Um, you're 17 at the time. Yeah. you have any idea really what the magnitude of, of that movie was was going to be at the time how long it was going to last you know staying power for a movie where people really cared about it mm-hmm. whenever they see it because it's one of those movies no matter where it is yeah when you're watching you continue to watch it almost like true? Shawshank Redemption interesting yes I, you I, do no that's cool to hear yeah I didn't know that no it, um uh, yeah I, I I mean I knew obviously I wanted to make the film and the script was so special, and the roles were all great. And it was a great script. And to work with someone like Peter Weir and Robin Williams um, making that, it was a special time in my life. Made good friends from it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, a, it was a very special experience. So, I mean, it's obviously sad to talk about right now, but, you know, it was a great it was a, it was a, it was a great time in my life. So Normally you get these situations like, you know, Bill Murray's character in Caddyshack where he got to ad-lib his yeah. character in Caddyshack. Mm-hmm. Did, how much did Robin get to ad-lib because – People have this image that is spontaneous. Whatever comes to mind, he's allowed to say. Yeah, I, you know, certainly off off camera, he was, you know, he's he was funny quite often, and other times he was very serious. I think, I think he was making that film made a very um, concerted effort to just be a part of the team, even though he was clearly, you know, a movie star and, and a huge star at that time, and a, and the star of the film, but really made an effort to just want to feel like one of the ensemble players and he 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 was very nice to all of us in that regard and very generous and gracious and I remember him being very kind and and sweet and funny of course but as far as improving, no because that wasn't the the type of movie it was and I don't think you know he wanted to do that nor would Peter Weir want that it wasn't that type of role but I think he had to and that's probably not the best way to describe it but come down to your guys level so you it That's what happens like, when anyone works with me. They have to come down <laughs> to my level. But, but there has to be that real bond that you guys would have done whatever it took because he was asking you to do it. So he has – it can't be Robin Williams' is this big star, hey, now follow me to freedom here. You mm-hmm. have to – it has to be reciprocated. There has to be kind of this symbiotic relationship there. That's what was real about it is – you felt like you were equal with him at some point. And mm-hmm. I thought that that's, that's no, how yeah. it resonated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that didn't mean to go too deep there. Well, but you did. Wow, you went very deep. I, know, I was very impressed, deep. actually. What's the movie role? That Cry again right now. Come on. <laughs> oh, wow, really good. Really, really impressive. I was just thinking about the Orioles losing, so... <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's right. That's Woo. right. Woo. Uh, uh, give me the movie role you passed on. What? Because uh, everybody's. Been a bunch. I, I know, know, but one where you go, yeah, you know, maybe life would have been different if I had done this one. I, there, there's none where I feel like life would have been different. There's certainly things I've passed on that have gone on to be wildly successful. And, like what? But I, you know what? I, I don't like playing that game. Yeah, it's fun, though. No, but, I don't like playing that game. Because I've like, passed know, on roles. I've, look, I'm sure I've taken things people have passed on. I know I have. So, you know, it's, it's just part of the, you never know. Different people get different things. What about a movie that tanked that you passed on? Oh, God. 
I don't know. There's probably some of those too. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, we'll try to think things I've passed. I mean, you know what? I, I can guarantee you I've passed on some things that, uh, you know, have done quite well and probably some that have done really poorly. And I've taken some that you have done well. You've got to spill some. Give me a little. I'm not, I, I know it's boring of me, but what do you want to tell you? Were I'm you not, offered a, a role in Friends? No, I don't know. Did that you level. audition no. for Friends? No. Because I wasn't looking to do a television show at that time. So I don't, but, you know, I know. I can tell you no. What did you audition for? That might surprise me. TV show wise. <sighs> I, 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 I really, honestly, I, I don't, I've never auditioned for a TV show. No. No. So the good wife, they just gave it to you. Yeah. Oh, look at you. I'm saying it cocky. You're just asking me oh, what no, I've auditioned no, I didn't for. I've auditioned for saying... tons of plays and tons of movies, but I, I, I've never auditioned for a TV show. I would have had a good time at your 40th birthday party had I been able to say hello to Julianne Margulies. That's all. Mm -hmm. And I got to say hello to... I didn't get to say hello to Ethan Hawke either. Mm -hmm. Why was I cordoned off from everybody in the room? It was like your dad was talking to me the whole night so I wouldn't socialize with everybody else. Is that what it, is that what it felt like? Yes, it did feel like that. Yes. Like I could be in the room and I saw all these stars there and I went... And then I went to let, and then your dad would go, no, 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 one more thing I want to tell you about. And then he would say, you remember Raymond Barry and Johnny Unitas? And I go, I, uh, yeah, we <laughs> talked about this a few times. <laughs> wow. So my, my dad really, he was a burden to you. Is what no, he like. wasn't a burden. I think you said him, you know, like, dad, whatever you do, keep this guy away from my friends. I'm glad to have him here. Yeah. Well, I think, listen, I think there's obviously a part of you that's a little paranoid. And because that's not the case. That didn't happen. Mm. That's a better story that way. No, I guess so. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No. I, I did tell my dad to keep you away from everybody. Yeah, okay. That's fair. Yeah. It felt like it. He did a damn yeah. good job, too. But, I, but look, you had, there, was he food, got me there was food and booze <laughs> for you there. I mean, <laughs> everybody, you, know, like, you, were in, you were a part of the team, but I didn't want you socializing. Everybody got to sit down. I am standing at a counter with his dad. But my friend Nadia Dejani, who's an actress yeah. and, uh, and a huge, huge baseball fan, and she was very excited to meet you. Mm. Well, she's only human. But she was she was very very excited to meet you. Yeah, she was very nice too. She's great. Did she think it was? She's hot? actually coming down to Baltimore. She's going to the game tonight. Really? Yeah. Did she think I was hot? Um, trying to think what word she used. Creepy. Creepy. <laughs> <laughs> she said. She said, "Who's that guy crying in the corner? Yeah, yeah talking to you, <laughs> talking to your dad. There's a guy who just he's crying. Would you? <laughs> if I said, yeah. Emmy." Uh huh. Or World Series title. World Series title. Okay. I mean, is there, that is not even close. Okay. Academy Award. World Series title. World Series title. Best Actor Academy Award. Or World Series title. World Series title. Okay. All right. Fair because enough. World Series title means so much to so many in an entire city. I mean, Academy Award is. Yeah, a, but you don't have one, and you've already had a couple. Oreo you know what? I would be titles. all those things would be great, yeah. but it's not why I live my life. I'm not like sort of losing sleep to over. win awards. No, man, I love awards. You do? No, no, I don't. Because <laughs> I'm up against Bob Costas every year. How is Bob? How's my buddy Bob Costas? You doing? two, we're we, we, better now. We right? bonded. We're friends now. After after you sent off that screed to him, and then you I, you, <laughs> you snuck him in here. I, I to, called him. That yes. was fantastic. Oh, it was that was one a of good my laugh. Favorite moment. That was a really good laugh. Would you do a sports movie? Dying. You know what? That's the one thing I want. There's. I was just talking about this last night. I was like, I really want to do a baseball movie, and I really want to do. Uh, I really want to do a baseball movie. What, but what hasn't been explored? I don't know. That's what I'm. I'm trying to find out right now. Because like I'm at an age where. I only got a couple of years left. You know, I could direct one, you know, possibly. But as far as acting one, I've got a few years where I can play the veteran, the veteran player who's at the, who's Here's at the end here. Here's one for you. Here's one for you. The Roberto Clemente story. I don't think, yeah, possibly, but not for me. I don't think they're Well, no, think. you wouldn't play the role of Roberto Clemente. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that's, thank you. I, <laughs> I you felt like that was clear. Like Danny Murtaugh <laughs> or something, a manager here. Yeah. Well. Um, you're, you're also... Uh, the uh, football life on the NFL Network, right? You're yes. the voice of the... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Eric Dickerson airs tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to set you up. Just yeah, go no, with it. I wow, mean, Dan. Jeez. Smooth. No, Eric Di yeah, the Eric Dickerson one airs tonight. If I'm Stockton, you're not Malone, that's for sure. Wow. I'm, I'm passing you the ball here. And Wow. Okay. So quickly he turned on me. I just, oh, I just took a second. I'm having my coffee. Don't make me cry again. <laughs> Don't make me cry. Uh, so you voice... Uh, 
a football life. Eric Dickerson. I love doing saying, it. I mean, I love working with the guys from NFL Films. They're do so, you change so. your voice when you're doing a football life to go a little bit more? Like John Facenda is yeah. the greatest voiceover guy ever. I can't compete with John Facenda. I don't try. I try to just stay within myself. That's that's my motto in life, really. Just stay I mean, within. I don't even know what that means. What it means is don't don't try to be anything you're not. But you don't. we don't know who we are until we try something. Like, how do you know who you are? You have to push the boundaries. No. Nope, and then you come back. You're not, you're not wrong in that regard. Am I right, though? I'm, yeah, I just said okay. I agree. I, in no, in a sense, you're right. right. But I'm saying when, I, when I'm doing voiceover, I'm not trying to be somebody else is what I'm saying. I'm trying to be who I am. Stay within yourself. Yeah. I love doing it. The show's great. Um, I think they do such a good job. I, I, and I love football, obviously. So it's fun, it's fun to, to get in there and do it. Um, I'm excited to uh, – obviously, I'll be at the game tonight, even if it's raining. So I'll have to watch Eric's uh, – over the weekend. Uh, let's see. I remember John Facenda when Joe Theismann, when the the Redskins played the Raiders, mm -hmm. and Jack Squirek had the interception on uh, on Theismann. And I remember John Facenda's line, and it was, the silver and black clad masters of intimidation nearly <laughs> took Joe <laughs> Theismann's head off. And you have this, that, the, the you know, 18, 12 overture. <laughs> yeah. And it was just so awesome how Amazing. John Facenda could say it. Amazing. And you felt it. Um, anything else you need to plug here besides the free held? Not that you needed to no, plug I'm it. I'm plugging it. I'm just working just on it. Just letting people know. Yeah. Uh, Julian I was Moore. here to come. I was here to come over and talk about the Orioles. That's what I'm excited about. Right. That's what I want to plug. Will you? My baseball team going to ALCS. Um, will you show these guys how you died in uh, things to do in Denver when you're dead? Will you show us how to get <laughs> stabbed in the neck? Sh sure. Okay, sure. on our simulcast. On the simulcast, yeah. Okay. No, you know what? I'm not going to do it on the simulcast. I'll just do it for the radio <laughs> portion. Is that, is that fair enough? Well, it might not be good radio, but... No, I'll explain it. It'll be great. Trust okay. me. It'll be great. Right. He's uh, Josh Jones. Uh, thank you for stopping by, Josh. And Always. good luck to your Orioles. Safe travels down there. And bring an umbrella. Thank you. And tell all your good friends that I said hello. I will. All of them. Yeah. Everyone. Julianne, Ethan, all of them. Okay. Ellen Page, Steve Carell, Julianne Moore. Don't, don't really... Don't know Steve Carell. Or you haven't met him yet? No. But you're in the movie with him. Yeah, but I, you know, I'm, okay. I haven't worked with him yet. There. He's Josh Charles, Orioles apologist. There you go. There you go. I, if that, if, consider me guilty. Don't, you want me to cry again for you? Uh, let's both cry together on the way out. I don't think you can cry. I can't. I can't do it like you. <laughs> I'm just imagining you as some. Tell me what, why are you crying right now, Dan? What's, why are you so upset? <laughs> just tell me what's, what's wrong. What's wrong? I don't know. I, I just thought maybe you would care about a simulcast, and this is my career, and you. I know everything's Dan, a joke to you, Dan, Josh. It's not I a mean, joke. I care about your career. I mean, okay, I'm I just dying made a right mistake. now. You died on the Good Wife, but that was <laughs> fiction. This is real right now. <laughs> this is this is the damn Patrick show.